well, 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 well. Fuck you, man. You don't know DJ Marty. You may disagree, but up to me, it's a fact. You can't run in backs. It ain't no fun in that. Yeah, the sermon about to start, so I hope you know your stats. And if Kev get it wrong, then Rashad gon' have his back with, with the facts. Matter of fact, all we do is say win. Wins when wins, congregation say amen. Trades, debates, wins, losses, the latest news, but Prophet Kev speak. I'm looking to preach Kev, preach with Rashad. Here in another episode, another sermon coming at you from Wildcard Sports. Here on Wildcard TV. Rashad, man, what's going on, man? Shoot, man, it's like it's been a long time. Facts. We, we back, though, man. Got to give them a dope part to step to. Oh yeah, for sure. Hey man, the the second round is underway. Um, so since the last time we talked to y'all, right before the NFL draft, um, round one was still going on. A couple teams are out of it. We're gonna we're gonna uh, talk about a couple teams there before we move into the second round. Um, one team I want to talk about, man. Uh, team is going in the right direction. I think I think we need to start there because most of the teams who made the playoffs, like you would think, like. One thing I hear about NBA is the fact that over fifty percent of teams make the playoffs, right? So it's not like you got to be great; you got to be in the middle, right? And you make the playoffs. Um, but one team who started off terrible and turned the season around, especially with the acquisition of of a player, um, that's the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, CJ McCollum has proven that you know we always say like the 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 Dame and CJ thing won't work because pretty much the same player. Like you got. You got you got like a little lesser version in CJ, but when CJ got his own team, I think I think we pretty much can say that he's probably the leader of that team. You can see like his emergence and what he brought to New Orleans and how they was able to turn the season around, make the playing game, make the playoffs, and actually win two games in the playoffs. So against the uh, Suns, so that, that was pretty impressive. Um, Brandon Ingram uh, is doing what he's doing two years in a row, where he's he's actually showing like okay. This guy, this guy can do a lot. He can facilitate. He can rebound. He can put the ball in the basket. Um, the trade for Valencia Yunus, which worked out for them, uh, a big body down down center, uh, way better than Stephen Adams uh, for them. So they got some, they got front court scoring, and of course, whenever he come back, Zion Williamson. And I think uh, with the the draft picks of Jose uh, Herb Jones, other rookies like that, New Orleans Pelicans, man. Um, it was AFC this year in the playoffs, but I think when Zion come back healthy, it's it's a, it might be a problem over there. Yeah, like the the playoff thing. I'm not really tripping off the playoffs because like we look at it now, like almost every sport has almost half the teams make it. NBA sixteen out of thirty, hockey sixteen out of thirty two, NFL is fourteen out of thirty two. So it's about fifty percent either way. Baseball they don't really have it have it that high, but I mean, Pelicans on paper and according to 2K, you, <laughs> you would think they're going to be the, the next elite team because they they have Zion dominating everything, but I mean, he says he's healthy. Hopefully he is healthy. Hopefully he can get a nutritionist, get in shape and stuff like that because, I mean, when you think about it, he's probably the guy that was groomed the most to be the next American superstar. Yeah. Um, you know, because we got Braun, we got Curry, guys that really moved the the needle T V ratings wise. And as they're getting older, I think Zion was kind of groomed to be the the next guy. Of course it wasn't ideal. He landed in New Orleans, you know, if he'd have gotten to that New York Knicks market, it'll really been a bonanza then. So okay. it's not ideal he's in New Orleans, but uh I guess that kind of can make it for a good career story arc of him being in New Orleans and maybe going to a bigger market down the line. Or, I mean, because he's been presumably hurt, we got to think if they offer the extension, he's going to take it with no hesitation. But at the same time, we don't know what clauses they'll build in, like a weight clause or a <laughs> minimum games play clause or something like that. There's going to be some contingencies yeah. with that, that contract for sure. Uh, but the rest of the roster, you know, Ingram has kind of grown into his own. He was the most improved player in uh, 2020. And he's been steadily getting better, averaging about 22, 23 the last three seasons. So he's grown into his own, of course, on those Lakers teams with, you know, LeBron and stuff like that. He couldn't really show who he was. And, of course, you mentioned all the stuff about CJ being, you know, 
the number two to Dame. So on paper, they uh they have the pieces. Willie Green did a great coaching job the second half of the year. Yep. It's just a matter of can they really put it together. Um, they will be the most intriguing team probably outside of the Nets going into next year. That I think Nets, Pelicans, and Lakers will probably be the three most intriguing from like teams that didn't make the playoffs. So we got to see what uh what happens with them. Yeah, I, and I think New Orleans. Um, I know I know Zion to a big market makes the most sense, but I'm saying looking like this roster is better than him. Jumping to New York, if you know, let's say like you know somebody like a Bradley Beal or Mitchell doesn't go there, this roster is actually very, very good, very, very talented team. Um, and in the West, I mean, I, I know we sit here and talk about we were saying talk about the, the Suns and and the Warriors being the, probably the the main two teams, and then you got the Grizzlies who you know young and coming and, and probably here to stay for a while longer. John Morant stay there, um, but everywhere else is pretty much a one man show. Uh, Dallas, uh, Denver. Um, I mean, you got you got the Lakers who should bounce back. Maybe we'll see. Um, but uh, Portland's a one man show in Dame. So like, you got a lot of one man show teams outside of the main the main cogs and the Pelicans. They have a lot of guys. I I, I think the CJ addition, like with because Zion Zion gonna be a walk in twenty twenty ten easily. Like I, no, there's no there's nobody gonna stop this. I mean. Regardless of how big he is, which you know, like you said, you mentioned you mentioned the whole like the weight thing and stuff like that. It's like no matter how big he gets, you can't stop him. And I think I think that's the that's the whole part of it. Like Venezuelans can step out the way if they have to. Zion can actually shoot the ball a little bit. So you would think this team here is the next is the next team coming around. Like this team should be here to stay if Zion the guy. Like you build around him with CJ Ingram and you put shooters out there. Venezuelans is one of the best big men in the league. Like I said, I think CJ is showing that he can be Dame esque. He has the ability. He's, he's, he he can put twenty five, six and six on on the board. He might not get score sixty like Dame, but you know what I mean. Like, but still, but he's getting up there in age too. So you got to hurry up and try to capitalize on this. You know, got you a leader, got you Valenciunas, got you a rising star in Ingram, and then you got Zion who should be like you said the guy. If, if you're gonna if you're gonna bank on an American guy to be the next guy. You got to go him because NB, Giannis, Jokic, Luka, they ain't going nowhere. Um, I guess, and, and, you know, Steph is you know Steph is still up there in age. Uh, LeBron's up there in age. KD's up there in age. But John Morant, I guess, is your only one that you're you're holding hope for to to, to take that spot. But Zion was the first pick for a reason. Um, and if he can stay healthy, I like. I'm not saying I'm not saying they win no championship next year, but I, I think the potential is. I think the potential is is, is uh, what Michael Jordan said. The petition, the, the the ceiling is the roof, you know, some some oh, <laughs> something like that. On the Mike was on that day, <laughs> but yeah, so so uh, I I think they can I think they they can be the best team, one of the best teams in the league next year if Zion plays. If, if Zion, you told me Zion plays seventy games, you got you gotta assume they they they're almost fifty wins, if not more than that. So um, with the team that they got uh, around them, so shout out to the Pelicans. Um, Will agree them guys. They're on the way up, as we can see. Um, I think that's pretty much as far as the team that got eliminated. I I, th- I think that's pretty much to me, in my opinion, it. I don't know about you. I, I know the Nets has the ability to, to grow with um, Ben Simmons. You know he got back surgery right now, and I know the world hate Ben Simmons. I, I get it. I get it. Um, how how he get hurt without playing in the season game? I don't know, but you know. Anyway, he'll be back, and that's I mean that's all you can say. Kevin Durant, Kyrie, another year not going deep in the playoffs, so that their body can rest up, and the whole COVID thing will be out out the picture now for Kyrie. So, um, a, f- a full slated full season for them with Ben. Well, it would it be a different story because they was they were what they was a top five seed before Kitty got hurt. So, man, they they was they was really at the top before he <laughs> went down. You know, so yeah. that that really what is what shook up everything. But Brooklyn should be back. Um, on the east side, I'm I'm intrigued by the Bulls the most. They were they were up top for a minute, got derailed by some injuries. But the most intriguing thing is going to be what happened with Zach Levine's contract. He's up for a contract, had the knee issues and stuff like that. We don't know if that is something that's the, you know, that could be 
a prolonged thing, a reoccurring type of thing, or could that just be a, you know, he just had an injury riddle season and he'll be back. So the, to me, the Bulls are the team to watch because, you know, when you got the Lakers hovering of like, hey, are they going to make some moves, blow it up? Levine's the L.A. guy. Davis, a Chicago guy. I, I mean, it that. makes sense. It, it, yeah, I kind of missed that a little while back. You know, that <laughs> that that situation could play itself out or – uh, even like a like a Hornets situation of a guy like a, a Gordon Hayward, and then you got Russ, who's a Jordan brand guy, and he's been taking a beating. So Jordan not gonna let his guy keep taking a beating. You, I could see a a Gordon Hayward for Russ kind of swap to to give them a guy. But you know, it's uh it's a couple of things that got to play out that are kind of intriguing. Do you? So we'll see how it all plays out. Do you? All right. So I, I guess I guess if you're the front office for the Bulls. Option one, pay Levine max. Option two, trade Levine for AD. Which one are you taking? Or would you? What do you think I, is better I, I for the make this right. for, for AD or just a trade in general? Just, just for like, if you can get Anthony Davis, I would take that trade because that's that's Vucevic, Davis, DeRozan, Lonzo, Caruso, and you can probably add hey, a Kobe few more White. things to your, to your bench. Yeah, yeah, Kobe White. You can add a few more things. Uh. I think that'll be fine because now you have offense and defense. Because that's what they lack. They they could guard a stick. Like when Lonzo got hurt, Caruso and Davis. That is a that's that's a that's a that's a problem. Like you got somebody in the front court and in the back court who can who can. All right, so you know, I'm kind of with you. If you if the Lakers want to retool, the, just say start over, blow it up. I think Levine and a Gordon Hayward addition to LeBron. And you build a retro team with defense around it. I mean, you gotta try something. I mean, for the Bulls' sake, sake you want to win the East because we 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 sit here watching the Sixers. I know NB's it hurt right now. We sit here watching them. You sit here watch uh, Giannis dominate, KD dominate. Where where is your front court guy? I mean, I, we know DeRozan is DeRozan, like, and he's still gonna have his. Like peaks and valleys, yeah, exactly. So he a- have, extreme peaks and valleys, right? Exactly. So he, he's gonna have that. So you need you need to counter that. And I know Levine, and I mean I know Levine is a great player, a uh, rising star. But and and I, and, and I, I know the other side. Davis has been injured. I get that. But let's talk about the impact that Davis that Davis has when he's on the court is it, unmatched, and it's contagious. I think putting him around Lonzo in front with Davis behind it, it changes with Pat Williams too. I forgot you could slide Pat Williams at the three because he's he's six eight and, and can shoot a three ball. So it's not like he can't play small for he because he what he, they, they call him Kawhi Leonard like a, you know a, a, a baby version of it. So Kawhi plays small for it too. So is put him at small the Rose at the two back to his I think natural position in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and then with Lonzo, you're you're talking about you're 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 changing you're changing the you're changing the face of the Bulls, and because when Pat Williams got hurt, he was done. And Lonzo, you, you couldn't you couldn't guard a stick. Like so I think that's that's very interesting um topic. I think a lot of people need to realize like like you don't want to get stuck. I think I think a lot of teams sit for like, all right, well we had to do it. Like Utah. They had to pay Gobert. They had to pay Mitchell. But it could ain't what it's gonna get. Chicago, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's Chicago just the market dictated that for them. But Chicago different. Chicago big market. It's time to make it's time to get big things, it's time to it's time to stop living in the past of Michael Jordan, right? That's that's we're 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 thirty years almost now, like away from that. So it's time it's time it's time it's time for a new a Bulls to be reemerging. You know, I, we're out of the dead Rose MVP years. We're out, we're a long time from that. So it's time for it's it's time for the show it better because I mean, you won game what game two? They stole game two, and then got smacked every other game after that. Like it's. It's the reason why they, they they didn't beat good teams all year, and I think defense is the main cog. So you go get a defensive superstar in Anthony Davis. I I see why you can say why they can be intriguing. I agree. You know, one team, uh, and last last team we got here, uh, Denver Nuggets got eliminated. Um, what what did Denver got to do to stop wasting? I, I don't want to use wasting. I, I guess that's kind of just like kind of bad word, but. Like letting his prime years go to waste, I guess you could say. Um, I, I, I know injuries play a part of it. Jamal Murray was out, Michael Porter Jr. was out, but 
how long do you keep running this thing back before you say, hey, we need to do something to we need to do something crazy to to make sure Jokic is one happy, one happy, two not carrying this franchise for five years and then break down like most you know most superstars do like after after carrying a team for so long. I mean, there's really nothing they can do. I mean, it's just uh, they're just kind of going to be what they are. You know, he's an international superstar. Those guys hardly ever complain or ask out. That's like, nice. Hakeem stayed with Houston forever until they kind of ran him off. Uh, Patrick Ewing stayed in New York, so they ran him off. Dirk stayed in Dallas, so they ran him off. <laughs> Duncan stayed in San Antonio. Barring something crazy, Luca will probably stay in Dallas. So I mean, most of the international guys, once they get to their team, they just kind of like, you know, they're they're not part of that AAU culture of chasing all, mm-hmm. chasing the bag, you're chasing playing with the homies and stuff like that. Nothing wrong with that. They're just these guys just aren't built that way. They just like, hey, I'm gonna play who I play with, and we're gonna make the most of it. So, I mean, when you just look at the history of Denver, I mean, we like Yogi, but when you look at the history of the franchise, what about that history tells you they're gonna make a a huge splash that's going to put them over the top or I'm about to say they do the opposite. Basically when you look at the West, you got the three, you have two hitters, the young emerging team, you got sons and warriors, basically the, the dynasty of our era right now, the the best team from last year and this year, they made the sons made the finals last year, best record the entire season this year. So the team from the last two years, the reigning dynasty pretty much from the, the West, the emerging Grizzlies. So basically from four all the way down, that spot is going to be taken. So that could be Pelicans. That could be the Wolves. If they grow up a little bit, mm. uh, you got, like you said, you got Denver. But, I mean, last time we saw them with Murray and everything, I know people say, well, they were in the West. You know, they were right there on the brink of the West. But I, I really can't rock with that, man. Like, it was the bubble. They were lucky to get out the first round against Utah. I mean, Conley had a good shot. And then, of course, <laughs> the Clippers and Doc Rivers had the most ultimate meltdown. So, I mean, if you really look at Denver, man, they should really just be a first or second round knockout every year based upon what their roster is constructed to be. And when you look at just their history, that's all it's been. Like, Melo was there a good seven, eight years. Knockout first round, had the one West Finals run in 09. And then even before the mellow time, I think they made a West Final in the 80s, 85 or 86, something like that. That's just what Denver is. Uh, I know I think that Larry Brown's the coach. They made – like they just kind of been a team that makes like four, five, maybe six West Finals. You probably get one per decade. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> That's about it, man. They've always just been like a, a first or second round knockout, no matter who, who's who been there. Like, they made – I'm looking at their history right now, so I can quote it exactly. 2020 made the West Finals. 2009 made the West Finals. Uh, we got 1985 made the West Finals. Mm. We have 1978. And then before that, they were in the ABA. So that was, what, four West Finals? Everything else is a first-round or second-round knockout. No matter who was the coach, no matter who was on the roster, everything saying, else they, was they a first They played a lot, too. Like they, they be there. Yeah, they're they're consistent. They've always had good coaching. Mike Malone's one of the, one of the probably – I'm going to give him credit. Probably one of the, I know people throw numbers out all the time, but Mike Malone is probably one of the ten best in the game right now. Easy, yeah. Um, before him, they had B. Shaw. Before that, they had George Carl, who's one of the all-time win guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, they had just had a couple of guys that were decent coaches, like uh, Larry Brown coached it before. They've they've had some decent coaches throughout their tenure. It's just uh, yeah, they they're gonna be a perennial playoff team or at least close to it. So you can always kind of put them down if they have a decent roster. Lock them in for 44 to 48 wins. And that's just what their ceiling is. Like, Jokic may still win the MVP. Um, they haven't announced that yet. All the other awards have come out. So, shout out to Ja, Harold, 
Scotty Barnes, Marcus Smart, all of them. Um, Jokic or MB will be MVP. Jokic could go back to back. But, I mean, that's going to be the highlight of their their franchise, Jokic being yeah. back to back MVP potentially. And that's, and that's, and that, to me, it's just not enough. Like, you, like, who do you think is the best player in Denver franchise history? Jokic. Jokic. <laughs> like, it's, it's right now. Yeah, it's right now. Like, it's yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. him, Melo, Deadly. and um, Alex English. English, and you had Andrew. So, so that's the thing. Like, they've been on the other side. They traded the guys they had away. Like, traded Melo away. You traded Deadly to the Pistons in the 80s. Like, you traded your best players away. So... And like you said, Yoga's not not gonna be the guy that you, you can't trade a top three player right now. I mean, he's I mean he's, I mean, what he did what he did this season last season, you, you got well, you got to ride. Back to back, if he go back to back MVP, as long as he finishes his career standing up pretty decently, he's gonna probably be a top ten center of all time. He might like, and I, I know you 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 probably need rings to move up five you know, farther than that, but. Like him, him, and EB, MB, like it's gonna be so hard to deny them a fi- like a top five spot the way they're going right now. Um, I, I mean, I mean, the only thing I, I, I say, I said it before, like you just have to trade Jamal. I mean, because you're gonna pay Jokic, right? Whatever, the, whatever, them, whatever the amount he say I want, you gotta, you gotta sign it, like whatever it is. So he gonna get the, the super max, whatever you want to call it, he's getting that. Now, now you're broke as hell because Aaron Gordon got paid, Michael Porter Jr. got paid. Now you got Jamal Murray. There's no way a, a team like Denver can handle four max guys. So you have to trade to make sense, to make room. And what do you do? And and that's and that's the crazy part. Like, who do you who do you pick? One probably shouldn't have picked no Aaron Gordon, but that's that's beside the point. But you gotta go get something. They got it got man. You gotta go. I just I just throw whatever chip it is at Bradley Beal and hope, or or maybe maybe Jazz when blow it up. You go you go steal Mitchell. I, I don't know. But you you you're gonna need another. But I mean, if you go get Mitchell, Mitchell's game really hasn't grown enough. So like, that's if you true. try to get Mitchell, what are you giving up? That that's gonna mean you giving up Murray. I, just, I, I, I give you Murray. Is it? I mean, do do, do they want Murray off injury? I mean, well, Jazz got to get something. And, and that's really it. Because those, those are two max guys. Yo, get your Murray. Uh, you, you gave Aaron Gordon his money. Barton expires this coming up season. Monte Morris. Uh, you pay Michael Porter Jr. the max. Monte Moore might be good enough to be a like a starter. Not saying like he's like I, like because Jokic is so good at running the offense. I don't know. If, I don't know if you need a point guard. Like you know, what I'm saying like, I don't know if you need a. I mean, over time that's going that, that's taxing him though. I mean, you basically ask him to do everything. Well, no, get, I, get, I mean, I mean, twenty seven, like, ten boards, and yeah. seven, eight assists. Because even with Murray, he was still getting six to eight assists. Well, yeah, I mean, more like a like when when you doing the. Like you don't need a strong point guard, is what I mean. Like you don't need a Jamal. I don't think you need as good as person as Jamal Murray. Like you need a closer. Like you, you need somebody who can who a wing who can close the game, and Jamal Murray can do that. He he can close the game for you. But I mean, like more like if we trade Jamal Murray, we ain't got to swap point guard for point guard. Is what I mean. Like if he if we get a a nice two guard who can put the ball in the basket, then that's fine. I don't know. It's it, it's gonna be hard to to choose what I mean to really pick or choose what they need, but my thing is time ticking, and I I, I, I hope they they realize that like it's only it's only a matter of time before before things go a different way, you know what I mean? I mean I just think where they are that's what they're always gonna be. Yeah. They're gonna always be <laughs> a consistent forty four to forty eight win team. They they may draw a good matchup, get out the first round. They may draw a bad matchup, be knocked out first round. So yeah. I just think that's when you look at the team's history and stuff like that. That's just kind of what they always have been. I think that's what they'll continue to be. They'll draft well and they'll try to keep their guys in the house. But that's about it. Yep. All right, we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll be back with uh, with NFL talk. All right, we had the NFL draft. Um, this past weekend, um, you know, a lot of trades, man, <laughs> teams moving up, moving back, um, going after you had a lot of receiver runs, defensive runs early in the game. Um, only nine quarterbacks taken something we never seen before. 
where we only won the first round or like won in the first sixty five picks. It was kind of it's kind of crazy. You was always wondering when when was that domino going to drop. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to lean on like the just positions first. So quarterbacks, man. Um, we 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 knew that we knew the guys coming in. Kenny Pickett, Ritter from Cincinnati, Malik Willis out of Liberty, uh, Matt Corral from Ole Miss, and then Sam Howell, who was supposed to come out the the year before, but decided to go back to school. And you know when all his weapons left, Dynami Brown, the two running backs from North Carolina, uh, his season one is great. But you know we but we know how that works. Like when you ha- you don't have nobody, you ain't got nothing. I mean it is what it is. Uh, Pickett go to the Steelers. So Steelers took the first quarterback, like, like I said, the first in the first 65, 70 picks. They took a quarterback in the first round. They took Kenny Pickett. Um I, 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 and I guess it's like, was it was that is that the best move for the Steelers? Like was Kenny Pickett the right guy? And my only thing is he's already in Pittsburgh, so you can't question can he play in this weather? Um he's already liked around that community. Um and on top of that, uh he should be able to. I think, and I think he was more the most, the most pro ready to beat out Mitch Trubisky and beat out um, uh, Rudolph. Sorry, ass. Um, so, Pickett, your thoughts on Pickett? I like the pick. I was hoping he did land there. I mean, I think just as a day one guy, he's the most ready. I think. They drafted a decade long starter, at least. Like he, he should be a second contract guy, which means you no, know, that's eight to ten years. Because your rookie deal is five years, you get signed again for your second contract. I think he can be. I felt like if he was drafted to the right place, he could be the best versions we've seen of like Ryan Tannehill, who was like an MVP candidate the year when he kind of took over for Mariota and kind of got the Titans on a good little run. So. I feel like at Pickett's peak, that can probably be him or maybe Matt Ryan-esque. Mm. But if he went to a, a, a bad organization, I thought he would have been been terrible. So I'm glad he did land land there. I think they can coach him up. He has the weaponry, oh play pool, and, and, they, and they, they draft receiver well. So I think he'll have the weaponry. <laughs> you definitely going to have the coach in Mike Tomlin. They always keep a good staff there. Uh, I think he'll be fine. I think he's gonna be successful. I'm, I'm happy for him that he got drafted by them. Yeah, facts. Mike Tomlin, the defense. They got Brian Flores on defense coordinator uh, over there on that side. You got Claypool, Deontay Johnson. Then they draft one of the best receivers in the, I thought in the class. I mean, I know he got hurt, but Pickens from Georgia. I, I thought you probably, you probably couldn't go wrong this this draft drafting somebody from University of Georgia. I think that was probably the the main theme. They broke a record for the most picks ever. From a school, I think fifteen to sixteen guys drafted. So uh, you can't go wrong picking that. Got Najee Harris in the background and uh, backfield. You made a great point. He went to the right organization. I think going to other needy quarterback teams, you probably want, don't be as good, especially as early because none, oh, yeah. of these, none of these guys was viewed as the next Joe Burrow, the next uh, Herbert. So because of that, you had to go to the right organization, and I think Pickett. For the Steelers it was the right guy. Um, other quarterbacks, Ritter going to Atlanta. Um, hey, question question to you on this one, and I, I really I want everybody to, to think about this. Like when you're when you have a quarterback room, do you prefer the same type of guy? Because I mean, I'm saying this because like like you ever see you see you see teams like um, oh we got Zach Wilson, let's bring Joe Flacco to back up or. Like it's guys that are like totally different from each other, um, but then you see teams last year like Josh Allen, Mr. Trubisky. Mr. Trubisky might not be had the arm like Josh Allen got, but same same body type can can be mobile, all that kind of stuff. The Falcons do the same thing here. They got Mariota starting, Desmond Ritter, another guy who can take off and run eighty five yards to the crib, just like Mariota, another uh, mobile guy quarterback like that. Like, do you prefer your QB room to be? Similar type of guys, or do you think the the the, the QB rooms that are, you know, interchangeable, like or, or, or different 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 systems, you know, work better? Uh, I think it should be similar, so that way there's offensive continuity. You don't have to worry about trying to change up stuff game by game, or you know, season by season. Like when you had a a Drew Brees type offense, then you went to 
something to kind of accommodate Jameis a little bit more because they're they're two different kind of guys. So and there was an adjustment on their end, but when you have a Lamar who gets hurt and they brought in the backup seamless offense or the Josh Allen Trubisky type thing, like I just think you should kind of have a a similar style QB, like in the case of a of a, like a Cardinals from Kyler Murray to Colt McCoy. Luckily, Colt McCoy has been around the league for a minute. And he can kind of adjust to what the team needs. But, you know, going from a Jimmy G to a Trey, Trey Lance. That's, yeah, that's, you know, that, that's that's not ideal. Going from a Dak to an Andy Dalton, that's, that's just not ideal. So, you know, I just think you want to kind of keep some continuity. Unless what you have is an explosive, explosive type of guy that can transform something like Eagles – Eagles made the trade for AJ Brown. You got Jalen Hurts. Like he may be able to do something that Carson Wentz couldn't recreate after that that MVP season. You know, mm-hmm. so because that was that's a that's a transition from a, a Wentz type of guy to a Jalen Hurts type of guy. That's two different uh, two different guys yeah. extremes. So I just think preferably you have some continuity, so that way if somebody does go down, it's a seamless transition. Yeah. Um. So really goes there. Malik Willis to the Titans. Um, I think Titans got a good value pick on him at pick 87, well, third round, I believe. Um, Ted here already said it's not his job to be a mentor. Like, do you do you do you uh like that he said that or like is that a because I don't know. I I know Brett Favre didn't like Rogers like that, and I know like certain certain guys just don't do that. Um I mean, but, look at the history of the league. When has it ever been done? Ever. What? Joe Montana, Steve Young. What when, when did it happen in Brady, life? Jimmy, Favre, Rogers. Like when? When has it ever really, really happened like that? Where you you mentor somebody to, to take your spot? Yeah. I, more 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 times than not, these guys either get cut or traded. Like Joe Montana got the boot for Steve Young. Brady got Jimmy G out of there. They moved on from Favre to go with Rogers. So why would you? Why would you want to train somebody up take your to job. take your spot? That's, and that's a life thing. Nobody. Yeah, the, the the average QB makes twenty six to thirty million dollars in the league right now. So you're gonna basically kick yourself out of a twenty six million dollar gig at the minimum. Because if he take your spot, that means you want to go be a backup. You're gonna be a clipboard holder, or you retiring. Right. No, nah, I'm gonna hold my spot. You gonna have to beat me. For, <laughs> you gotta beat me for this spot, and then they gotta trade me somewhere else. But I'm not gonna just coach you up, mentor you, so you can take my spot and get me out the league two years faster. That makes no sense at all. Yeah, they, they, those are those are the facts. Cause like, hey, I was about to say, my dad, my dad had that similar had, had in, in life. Like, he had a job. They brought somebody in, and he but it was a training to take his job. He said, "Hell no, he left." <laughs> so it's like, wow, yeah, wow, you know. So I, I don't. When he, when he said it, I was like, to me, I was like, well, he probably didn't have to say it. Cause kind of like how I was like, you don't have to say it, cause. You're not, you're not going to do it. So, but I guess he answered, he answered the question honestly. Um, and the Titans, man, they they kind of did it like a rebuild. I mean, re, a re reset button, I guess, because still got King in the backfield, but no Julio, no AJ Brown. But you brought in Trey Trey uh, was in Traylon Burks from our Arkansas as a receiver. So, you know, they still got the big bad receiver who who could probably can block. You know, for Derrick Henry, um, Malik Willis, Willis is a big quarterback. So when it, just like Ten Hill, uh, I think and Ten Hill is very mobile. So, um, I think I think that's similar systems. If Ten Hill goes down, you you can still be okay. But yeah, this is this is a move, and th- this is this is why I say we always say first court, first round quarterbacks always start right. So the only quarterback I I expect to play is Kenny Pickett. I don't expect Ritter to come in, and he got to compete for his job because they they did sign um Trubisky, yeah, and they do still have Mason Rudolph. We got to. Be fair to mention him, so he gonna have to compete for his spot too. Yeah, I, I about to say so. Pick pick it. Pro- if you had a, if you had to put money on who wins, I mean, pick it probably win out his job. Ritter, we don't believe Mariota, so I don't know. But does the does Arthur Smith want to hitch his wagon to a rookie quarterback this that fast? With you know, I know they got Drake London out of USC. Uh, Kyle Pitts is there, but the receiving core is not. It's not great. It's not great at all outside of those two guys, and you got you got Cordell Patterson, who's who's dynamic changer. But so we'll see if Ritter takes the spot. I, I don't think Willis has no chance of playing this year unless Ten Hill goes down to injury. Um, what leads us to another guy, man, Matt Corral, Ole Miss, who, to be honest with you, I thought 
was the best quarterback coming out. Like early in the year, I was like, that's 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 what I'll take first if I'm if I'm taking somebody. Um he go to Carolina and like unless Panthers trade for Baker Baker was been a rumor. Like I doubt it. <laughs> but like since I've uh like he's I'm not I'm I am totally against Sam Darnold. Like if anybody wanna say Sam Darnold should start, I'm telling you no. I don't care what the other the other option is, I'm picking another option. So like I don't know. I and the thing is, it's so hard as a rookie to come in and outwork a guy who's been in the league in training camp, right? Like you don't, you don't really. I mean, when does it ever happen? When is it? When is when has it ever happened where a starter come in, uh, somebody get drafted to come in? And, oh, I'm just that much better. Like Baker was no more big and lost to Tyrod Taylor. So Tyrod Taylor beat everybody out in training camp. So it's, it's you know, so so does does Sam Donald. Went out the deal. I mean, he's making eighteen million dollars, right, or something like that. Some crazy number. So yeah, he's like, his, yeah, his fifth year option got picked up, so he's still on like eighteen, nineteen million. So, I and I guess, I guess the question is, um, if you're trying to win, do you go Sam Darnold or the rookie? Because obviously, I think the both options are probably a, a, a zero. Like you're not going to win, but. We gotta do something. We can't. You can't have the best, a top five defense, and then a bottom five offense. When you got McCaffrey, and DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and those guys, like something got to give. I mean, we're gonna start at division level. They're gonna be the third or fourth best team. We know the books are gonna be the runaway favorite. I don't say the runaway because I'm gonna respect the Saints. Saints made some big signings. Right, drafted well. They'll get James back healthy. So the Saints and Bucks will be the top two in the division. So now you're looking at third or fourth place. Um, if stuff breaks right, maybe a wild card, but that's a that's a stretch based upon like just expectations. Because normally when you have two QBs, you don't have a QB, and that mm. means you went you went for a bad season. So mm. Darnold, Darnold has done what he's done. We know what he is at this point. Um, he's gonna make his money, but there's no way he finishes the year as a starter. Just based on history, normally the the more veteran guy is gonna beat the rookie out. So we can just go in and start taking bets on when will Matt Corral take his first snaps because he's gonna play at some point during the season. Because yeah. Donald's if Donald's on his last year, they're gonna get Matt Corral reps. They're tied to Matt Rule for a little bit. So, barring the season that's going off the rails and going like 2-15, and 15, Matt Rule will be back again. So, it is basically just taking bets on when will Matt Corral take his first snaps because he's going to play. Yeah. I, you got to see what you got. I, I mean, I think he was the second-best QB. I thought Pickett was one, and I had Corral number two. All right. So, we we both we both believe in Corral. So, it's a it, it, top two prospect for cool QB. So, yeah, that's gonna be interesting to see. Um, we'll, it's it, it'll be interesting. You're right. I I, th- I think when the schedule come out, um, I think what next week, May 12th, um, when the season when the schedule come out, you can go ahead and start placing the best. You can go ahead and all right, they'll probably be one and six right here. Mal Mal go ahead and play him. Season over with. Um, yeah, if he if he doesn't get injured first, like he had mono, and then he missed some time last year, so. Donald's gonna miss some time at some point. So whether it's you never want to wish injury upon anybody, but whether it's an injury or just bad play, he will not finish the year as the Panthers guy. He'll get his money, but Matt Corral will play some games for the Panthers this year. Yeah, uh, we we got we got our dynasty uh, rookie draft coming up soon. Uh, so it leads me to the receivers. In this case, you saw the you saw the run. I think. Eight pick eight, 10, 11, 12, 16, 18 was all receivers in the first round. Um, followed by a lot of second round picks after that. Um Drake London from the going to Atlanta, great Garrett Wilson, Jets, Olave to the Saints, Jameson Williams coming off an ACL injury from Bama going to the Detroit Lions. And you got Dotson, I think, from what Pac 12. I can't remember school. He, he no, he, he's he's Penn State. Penn State, Penn State. John uh, Dotson, he's Penn State. He's going to the Commanders, which you know, you give Scary Terry over there some help. Um, whoever the QB is, um, Carson, Carson Wentz over there, over there, give him some help. And then Traylon Burks to the Titans. We just mentioned him. Um, it that is a very interesting um, uh, class of receivers. We talked about how deep they were before. 
Um, John Michi went to the Texans. You had uh, Pickens, I say, go to the Steelers, which is I think is a great steal for them. Uh, Packers get Christian Watson from North Dakota State. That guy, that's, that's a baller. Like, I, I know people are saying, like, Packers didn't get nobody, you know, in the first round. Well, you can't get them if the top six go in the first 20 picks. Like, you can't, you, you, you're not there. Um, but they, and, I, and they they don't really do receiver in the first round like they they did. They, they went uh, they went defense first. They went Georgia they went can't go defense. wrong. Yeah, so they they went defense first, and we saw it. They did last couple of times. They had first round picks and went offense. They went Jordan Love and AJ Dillon. AJ Dillon, yes, Jordan Love, no. Like because that was the that was the draft to get your receiver right there to get Justin Jefferson or somebody. That was your time to get your receiver and be set on offense, but they didn't do that. Um, the pick I like the most, Olave to the Saints. That gives you somebody opposite Michael Thomas. Finally, he Jesus. should he should be able to walk right in and uh, put up a seven to eight hundred yard season. And then the second one I liked was Dotson to Washington. I think okay, the Eagles made the trade for AJ Brown. They had the Bunte Smith. You're banking on Jalen Hurts making more improvement another year in the offense. Of course, the Cowboys are the Cowboys. They're going to always get the media fan free. But I think Washington is going to be the sneaky team in that division, and they could be the one that maybe gets a wild card or sneaks in and wins, and wins that division because Dotson was so productive at Penn State. And like you said, you got Terry McLaurin. Their defense is going to be stout. They're going to have 99 problems chase back. So, I mean, Dotson was a almost a 1,200-yard guy at Penn State his, his senior year. And I think before that, he was about – 900 so I just think as a wide receiver too plus that defense as long as Carson Wentz does what he can do as long as, long as he's better at, than at, at the highest level they may be okay as long as he's better than Tyler Heineke they made, they made a playoffs yeah. with you know what I'm saying like, <laughs> like yeah so um, my, my favorite one it's it's and, and it's more of a projection. It's because he's injured right now. I think Jameson Williams to the Lions. Um, we've seen St. Brown emerge as a star immediately. So hey, I, I already I already text you what I can say about Lions. I'm holding off for a minute. I don't want to say that right now, man. <laughs> so, I mean, you got one of the best tight ends in the game. You got a young r- running back on a uh, rookie contract in Swift. You got you got a star receiver in Brown. Now you're adding probably the fastest receiver, the fastest receiver in the draft. Um, and, and we saw at Bama like he how how hard it was to guard him. So like like the fact he tore the ACL that Georgia was I say Georgia was lucky. I mean Georgia probably still won anyway, but I'm just gonna say Georgia got let off the hook a little bit there. Um, but Jameson and Brown together once they once and I know he, where you going with yours like once they. I mean, I don't even think they even – I think golf is good enough with those two. I mean, right now you're not going to win the division because you, you got a lot of things to work on and build on. But right now, I mean, and then you trade it up to 12. And all they did was give up um, – pick the Rams first round pick at 32 and gave up 34. Like you didn't you – know, you didn't – you know, you didn't cost yourself an arm and a leg for a receiver. So I, I think I think this draft was different. Like this, this was a quarterback that was going to get – they would have gave up a lot more, but because you you got a receiver who paired with what's the name paired with uh, Saint Brown, it's a, it's it's going to be a great pairing. I think that that can be a dynamic duo right there in in the Motor City. So that was my favorite one, um, underrated one, Sky Moore to the Chiefs. They oh got, man, they 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 Chiefs are going to be they're trying to reload for the low low on a cheap price. Yeah. Sky Moore with five nine, five ten, fast. Hey, he got they got their own look. And he got big hands too for a five nine guy. Hey, all right. Hey, I, I feel like and I feel like I don't know, everybody was talking about Mahomes, Luton Tyree Hill. I feel like the longest their receiver core is actually like nice as hell. Like Juju, you still got Miko Harmon, who's now gonna be ascending into a role. Kelsey, the best tight end in the football. So you they 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 they'll be perfectly fine. As long as Mahomes is the quarterback, you you you're definitely fine. Yeah, um, as long as he's standing, he should still be an MVP level player, and they should still be winning 11 to 13 games based upon the schedule. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw it out there, man. You mentioned the Lions, Swift, St. Brown, you drafted James Jamison Williams, TJ Hawkinson should be one of the best Titans in, in the game. You already got your tackle, Penny Sewell. 
if you can just put a few pieces on defense in place and you can draft the QB, it won't be long before Aaron Rodgers does age out. I know it's a, you know, a league now where you can't hit the QB, but if Aaron Rodgers ages out or Justin Fields doesn't turn to the guy he's projected to be, Lions could, I don't want to say be the perennial division winner, but they could be a, a solid playoff team here and there because we know the Kirk Cousins thing in Minnesota is not going to last forever. That's why I didn't mention him because it's not going to last forever. Right. They're, not, they're, gonna keep, they're not going to keep paying him top of the market and you're not winning a whole lot of games for him. He's the best QB probably in their franchise history, but they're he, not going to keep he paying is. him. Yes. Yeah, they're not going to keep paying him what, what they're paying him. And at some point, they'll move on. So then they'll be in the QB market, which has been their hardest position to fill their entire time in the, in the league. And, and they've so, been leads in the fifties. So if the Lions was to get a few defensive playmakers and a solid, well, I don't say solid, but they can find their QB. Like if they can find another Matt Stafford, rare, but if you can find another Matt Stafford level type guy, with, and these offensive weapons paying out, we had St. Brown in fantasy, so we know what St. Brown brings to the table. If college is any indication, Jamison <laughs> will, will, will be that guy. Yeah, and you got you got your offensive tackle. You got to just fill in some other holes. And I think they could be, they could, they have the potential to be solid. Potential. I'm not, I'm not going to wave a lion's flag, but I'm just saying they are gradually putting things in place. They, they just got Hutchinson with the second pick in the draft, yeah, which a lot of people thought he was going first in the draft. That's a start. So, you know, if you are, if you're hitting on your picks, you could potentially be a, a, a decent team going forward. Yeah. The, the NFC North is always going to be interesting once Aaron Rodgers leaves because you're right. The Kirk Cousins they know, doesn't last long, and the Bears ain't really doing anything to to make me give any confidence. You like, like you, yeah, let, let go your best your best receiver because you can't use them. So, like, I don't know. That yeah, that'll be weird. The Lions are on the right track drafting Hutchinson. Um, question for you. We we talk about other quarterbacks and all this stuff, but the number one pick, Trayvon Walker. You think Jazz? You think Jazz messed up? Yeah, man. Like he didn't win nothing <laughs> about winning, but he was not the recognized award winner for anything in college. Was so the like they're player? basically drafting him based on potential. Like when. <sighs> When they said it, like I know some people were mocking him, like mock draft wise, mocking him as the first pick. I'm like, why? So clearly they had some intel, but I still thought they may just go kneel and put him on the opposite side of the line because you do have Trevor Hutchinson's the safe pick. I think he's going to be right in line with the Chase Youngs and uh, the Bosas. He he has that potential. I mean, whether whether it gets recognized in Detroit or not, he has that kind of potential. But yeah, when I heard Trayvon Walker, I was like, "Jag, Jags, just keep on jagging." Jag, Jags be jagging because you you don't have the number one pick and draft potential for Jaguars. You draft the best player. That's what you do. You draft you draft the guy because like think about this, Georgia. Jordan Davis was the best player on the D line. The linebackers were the best part of the Georgia defense, like. The corners in the second night, like, like I can name like three or four Georgia players before I name Trevon Walker. So yeah, like his name don't even come to mind. Like nah. Kobe, uh Dean, Jordan Davis. Like you can think of so many other guys before you get to Trevon Walker. Like people don't even really think of him at all when you think about the defense. <laughs> like you were saying, like you think about four or five other guys, man. And for him to go first, that lets you know, like you know, they they banking on potential. I mean, does he have upside? I mean, I didn't personally scout him, but I mean, everybody got upside if coach right. And that's the thing. But you're banking on that at the first pick. I, I just can't do that. First, with the history of the Jags, oh, his, you can't do that. The history of the Jags. You need a you need a culture guy. Aiden Hudson is more like a culture guy you can build around, and yeah. you know you can trust him to come in and work hard. But to go off potential, I don't. Yo, I don't understand. Yo, the history of the Jags. Followed by a first year defensive coordinator. This you're not you're not going to Bill Belichick, Mike Tomlin, and Brian Flores. You're going to a first year guy at DC with with Doug Peterson. 
And like we're at, we're asking the guy who wasn't even the best defensive player on Georgia football team. Number one, when you have Hutchinson and Thibodeau, see, and that's why I don't like about guys being too great early. Like Thibodeau and, and Stingley Jr. still both went top five, but there's no reason why Thibodeau and Thibodeau should not have been the number one, right? Or or if if not Hutchinson, right? Hudson yeah, they, they need, they, those guys need NBA rules where, like, okay, well, I had my dominant freshman year. I'm out. Something. That's what they need. Because <laughs> Thibodeau, Thibodeau got prospect fatigue. Like, it's a real thing. He was the number one player out of high school. Number one player in college football. Like, he was, like, he was dominant over there in Oregon. Like, I mean, he led the team in sacks, and he played half the year. Like, like he, he was really trying – I mean, I, I can't say with certainty, but I feel like he was just trying to just play decent and not get hurt. Like right. He was trying to make it to the draft so he can get – just get me – Hey, I'm about to say, because he, he, he got the little foot scared. He said, and I'm done. Was Stingley, like, they, him, like you said, him and Stingley, they were they were just trying to get to the draft. Yeah, yeah. And, and the fact that Jaguars – you need a corner. You need the D lineman. I, 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 and, and, and I guess they I guess Trayvon Walker don't have to be elite because you got Josh Allen on the other side, but – No. But why? Yeah, exactly. you you why? But, but but why? Why not trade back? At, tr- let let the Giants come up or somebody come up to one, and you take the best available, best remaining. Because the the fact that you left Hudson and Thibodeau on the clock, I, I just I it, it all it all be tied it all be tied to that pick. You literally could have had Hudson. You literally could have had Thibodeau, but you chose the potential guy. When you when you're not you're not a potential team like. When has the Jags ever like made somebody great? Like, bro, this this may be a little little too harsh, but they probably took barely a top ten defensive player on the board because I think Hutchinson is better. Yep, I think not in order, but I think Hutchinson is better. I think Thibodeau's better. I think Spingler's gonna have a better career. I think Sauce Gardner's gonna have a better career. Uh, Kyle Hamilton was the best safety. That's five. Uh, the best player on George's defense, Jordan Davis. Jordan, Jordan Davis. Uh, Jermaine Johnson. He fit. There's like yep. seven, eight guys I just named. I think all of them were better than than uh, Trayvon. Yeah, and and that's, uh, that's because it's Pac-12. It's a toss up on me for him or McDuffie. Because like you know, I mean. Normally the Pats were just offensive friendly, they don't really stop anybody. So yeah. I don't want to say Trent McDuffie is better he'd than probably, he'll probably have better impact though. McDuffie's gonna have better impact on the Chiefs. On Kansas he, City, he should. Because yeah. <laughs> he he's gonna be asked to asked to. Yeah. So the Jaguars, man, stop jagging. Like I Jesus Christ. Like, bro, I thought I thought Devin Law was better than him. Yeah. So I I I thought he was barely a top ten defensive player. Yeah, so that's that, that that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna weigh heavy on that that front office. For the Jags, I mean, they did get Devin Lloyd. They did draft him later on in the first round. So, I mean, you're hoping that that makes up for it. But because you know me, like, I, obviously, it makes better sense to take Hudson and Tittle because they're much safer picks. But if if Devin Lloyd becomes the best defensive player in five years, you got him at 27, and 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 uh, uh, who was talking about? Um, and then with Trevon Walker is like the just a nice solid piece, I guess. But if you look over to Detroit, you look over to you look over there to New York and see Thibodeau on a Hall of Fame career through five years, you're like, okay, I could have had Devin Lowe and him. We could have been in such you know such a different place. But we'll we'll have, we'll have to we'll have to revisit that in a couple of years because potential and Hutchinson, Devin Lowe, and Josh Allen just sound better to me than <laughs> than Trevor Walker. That's not a knock. To yeah, yeah, we're not saying he's sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him. Like, he he yeah. changed his life, his family's life. I'm happy for him. You know, he get to stay pretty close to home and everything. So I'm happy for him. You know, that he made history, but I just didn't yeah. think he was the guy that should have went number one. Yeah, I was about to say he 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 very well could have a great career. Um and and but my thing is I don't know if Jacksonville is the right team for him. Not not necessarily he shouldn't go because like if the number one pick was the Ravens and he goes to Baltimore. I, I probably don't care because Baltimore. You cre- gonna be solid because it's Baltimore. Like, cre- yeah, they create. They I, I, cre- thought, I thought they nailed the draft. Like, I, I don't oh, think yeah. Baltimore missed at all. Baltimore like, was crazy. 
the the Trey the Trey Hollywood who won just finally got his first big year, but the system is Lamar Jackson running around making plays. Hollywood won one one fit. You trade up to get a center. Then you lost your start center. Now you got a start center now. And you got the best I don't even they got they got they always get the best player somehow every time. So Ravens always be working. Ra- the draft. Ravens defense, they, they come for vengeance. I mean, I know Lamar got hurt and they had to replace um Hollywood Brown. And replacing him is not gonna be a tough task when you look at what's on the free agent market right now. Like Let's just say hypothetically, they say, look, we're going to take a little risk. We have the culture to withstand it. Let's go get Antonio Brown. Well, they just said that. Like, let's, let's go get Antonio Brown. You got to – if he get his if he get his ankle done and on that culture, you got an 800-yard to maybe a 1,000-yard guy. Landry's still out here. Odell's still out Julio. here. Whatever, whatever remaining of Julio's still out here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But man, like it's, it's guys out here that they they can add two guys. Plus, you have your tight end. You can you can add two guys, and you can still keep your offense roughly the same. And be like, look, we're gonna uh, run with this. If they get better receivers, I think Lamar will start running the ball so much, and they could probably make a Super Bowl run. Yeah, I, you you get Julio though. Julio is one of the best. Right, the reason I like I love Julio. I know we always go back and forth between Julio A B off of you know for a prime career. Like Julio is a great run blocker. Like I, like you want to K J K coming back. You got uh uh Gus Bus coming back. You you got get get you get you some receivers who can block. Who can like go on Jordan take that thing up there over there over there. Man, if I don't do them, bro, I gonna get A B and Julio. Why not? Why not? Or, or at least go get Landry and Odell. Like you got to put something to get. Like I don't know what they're gonna do financially for these dudes, but go get you two vets because like they're gonna want the ball, but at the same time they know it's about winning. As long as these guys are winning, they'll be okay. Yeah, I'm about to say at this point in the career, you have to know like okay, it's not what it is. Um, the last thing we we'll talk about, um, it, it's not even that much, but Stingley, Stingley versus Sauce. Um, I I think I think uh I think I, I just like when you when you have two position the same position get drafted back to back or close to each other, like to always pair their career together and see like did they go to the right team blah blah. Um, I think both both guys are gonna be asked to do a lot. Sauce didn't give him no touchdowns this past season. Stingley Junior. We said was well, great freshman year to try to get to the draft. Um, I thought Houston had a really good draft this year, and to add Stingley Junior. Who I think is probably. Who I if I if I was making my mock my my big board, Stingley would be my top three with with Thibodeau. I know prospect fatigue happens, but they're still gonna be great players. Like it just they, they you, you you're tired of they're being not in meant to stay in college alone. Like yeah, this is not like Adrian Peterson went through that. Like Clowney went through it, year, but he don't want he don't want to stay in college that long. Um, Maurice Claret, like guys just want to go to the pro, they, they, but they have to stay right. three yeah, three yeah, so, years. Stingley, man, I mean, saw his Gardner great picks. I think the Jets had a gr- a tremendous draft as well. Um, getting Gardner, jumping back up to get Jermaine Johnson. We talked about him earlier, and they drafted somebody else early too. Who um, trying to think, who was who else they got early? They, they got like a lineman or something. I mean, for Stingley to only play, I think three or four games this past year and still go where he went, that lets you know like the talent is there. He just got to be motivated. To actually perform because yeah. he was just burnt out on college. They had that great year. They won a title. I'm ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was ready to go. So they both should have good careers. You know, I, I mean, there's always bust potential with anybody just because it's that's just what it is. But the, um, um, and then you look at the teams they went to, there's always bust potential. Yeah. Not, yeah, not great franchise as of right now. Um, I think the 49ers. Last point, the 49ers saved the Jets. Because they off they off the Jets offered pick number 10 to the 49ers. 49ers said, no, we ain't doing that. We keeping Debo. Fuck out of here. And they ended up drafting Garrett Wilson. So would you rather have Garrett Wilson in a five year deal that is not gonna cost you as much as Debo would, who who asking for twenty plus million dollars? Like in a system where, I mean, Garrett Wilson is, is can stretch the field, can stretch the field down the field, and 
Zach Wilson can make some jump balls, blah, blah. But 49 to save them because now you're not wasting $25 million on Debo where you can pay multiple guys to come in instead. And now you got a young receiver who could be a star, who could be a Debo Sammy in five years. You know what I mean? So shout out to the 49ers because you saved the Jets for being stupid. Not stupid, but like well, you still I don't, 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 don't want to go. I don't want to get the Jets that much credit because I still don't know what the hell they're doing. Well, they got Garrett Wilson at 10 this year. You took Elijah Moore at 34 last year. Braxton Berrios had a solid year. And Denzel Mims over there. And Corey Davis. You, you still have uh, – you took Denzel Mims. <laughs> then uh, I think Corey's coming – Corey, Corey Davis Corey's there. Corey Davis there. So, like, I don't know what they're doing. Well – Because nobody playing five receivers. Well, I, I, I think I think they pretty much – I think they like Elijah – and I think they for the outs, for the slot for slot game, and I think they like Gary Wilson to stretch the field. The other two, Denzel, Corey, and then Braxton. Hey, get in where you fit in. If you don't fit in, all well. I think that's what it is. So, um, a lot a lot of young players, man, going a lot of places. Uh, we got we have a minute left. Um, that's pretty much all I got. I mean, shout shout out to my Vikings for getting some defense. God damn, we we, we definitely load up over there. Motherfucker pick. He took every everybody on defense. Took every level. I'm glad. Shout out to him. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever get a bad receiver class just because people seeing how it's getting paid now. It's getting paid right behind the QB spot and yep. edge rusher. So we'll probably never get another bad receiver class again. It's, it's gonna, it should always be at least five guys at minimum that should be bona fide first round talents in the first round at least. Yep. Just because that's gonna be the position guys gonna play. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully, we get a better QB class than this year. Like, if you if you six three or above, and you playing basketball, and you think you ain't gonna make it, go holler at your coach. Go play football from tenth grade to twelfth grade. Get you a D one scholarship. Make some decent grades. Trying to get hurt, you'll get drafted. And you, you can you can probably be a, a top a first round or second round pick if you're about six two to six five. And you think basketball ain't gonna work out for you? <laughs> yeah, that's facts. All right, man. Preach, care, preach. We'll be back next week with uh, another episode for y'all. Preach, care, preach. We're shot. Yeah.